wrap yourself in copper wire to create an electromagnetic force, and that will just make your pacemaker run forever. People I've smelled cheese that smells like a whale's vagina before. That's a really shitty dystopian novel. Like, what else do you have? Can you do that? You can get poop on your hand, but once you do that, you can't use that hand for anything. Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. We're thinking. And we're thinking. And we're thunked. And we're thunked. Oh my god. I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. Right. Now we're going, boys. Oh god. How many weeks have we been in quarantine? Day? We're, what is it? we're on day 10. Day 10. Coronavirus! I'm only on. I'm telling you, it's real. It's getting real. Woo! What is this? That that's the classic. Um, what's her name? The uh, a Cardi B freak out. I don't know what a Cardi B is. Cardi B is a singer. Okay, I think I actually don't know either. She's said, freaking out. I about. said that to somebody the other day. I was. Uh, they said Cardi B, and I said, "What's a Cardi B?" And they told me, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> So apparently, and wasn't that my fiance, thing. my current fiance? No, your current fiance tells me that all the time, though. So maybe, maybe it's a me thing. Actually, it turns out uh, it's, it's, it's not everybody else. I think. So welcome to the Thunk Tank. We hope you're having an okay time in the quarantine. We're not going to talk about Corona this entire cast. Well, yeah. no, we're going to talk about how to survive <laughs> a quarantine of Corona. Uh, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I. Anyways. That's the scary part is that we're at the point in the quarantine where people are seeing the title of whatever this episode is going to be and say, oh, maybe these guys have good advice at this point. Hopefully. Well, I think I want this to be I want this to be like um, any Thunk Tank podcast episode, which is one. If you take advice from us, that's your problem. Like, you know, don't take t- advice from t- us. Take advice at your own peril. But I will and say progress. this. There could be little nuggets of golden advice mixed into the sarcasm and nonsense that is the thunk tank more johnny didn't you, didn't you have a thing about that with like corn and poop yeah what about co- corn like like how your ideas are like you know like gold nuggets of corn uh i mean it sounds like something i've said <laughs> but I, I, I can't think of the quote right now. <laughs> well that that uh, just fell flat <laughs> can i open the podcast with a quote speaking of golden nuggets well, yeah sure you can go sure. all right yeah. ready and i want you johnny to try to guess who said this okay quote we are right. only as strong as we are united as weak as we are divided donald trump i'm guessing that's a hitler quote or something nope hmm Albus Dumbledore from the Goblet of Fire. Oh, Dumbledore. <laughs> it sounds very fascist, though. I just realized, like, if you drop a Dumbledore quote, it's, like, such a weird thing to do. Not really. There's enough of age Harry Potter people. I mean, they still aren't voting, but I just mean, like, like when you adults. say the quote and then be like, or just you open, like, you go, I would like to quote uh, the famous Albus Dumbledore from the Goblet of Fire. Yeah. And someone's like the fuck are you gonna say to me like <laughs> yeah dr albus and it's like that sounds reasonable and then you realize it's harry potter and you're listening to us yeah yeah <laughs> and you've been in quarantine 10 days yeah you're walking on the and beach so... and you click this because it said how to survive quarantine and now yeah. you're wondering like um if you're going to survive quarantine yeah although well, some I... of my ideas are becoming less ridiculous already like i ah. posted that article on the luggage workout because gyms are closed right right and you said when you came in to the studio that yeah i spent all this time kind of you know getting into a routine where i go to the gym i have upper body strength now and that's all going to go away if you don't go to the gym for even a few weeks let alone a couple of months i already feel it a little and bit I, yeah. i've done luggage workouts for years when i travel and so, I, why don't johnny you tell knows, people what johnny luggage knows, workouts johnny are. knows this where i i visit basically if i'm staying with somebody a friend or whatever or family for more than a few days I ask them, oh, do you have any books? And they look at me as if I'm crazy because they say, we're going to be busy. You're not going to have time to read all these books. And I say, oh, I have no intention of reading them. And then I fill up my suitcase. I wrote a whole article on this. And I did Johnny shaking his head. And I do. (laughs) It's such a good idea. What are you talking about? It's a terrible Most people just have weights (laughs) in their house. What most people? There's no kinesiology or any sort of like actual. Well, uh, uh, 
well, workout kinesiology, formulation. Kinesiology well, it's was picking things up and putting them down. Kinesi- Dr. Kinesiology was overrated. Kinesiology? Let me put it this way. Don't buy books to do Joe's mm-hmm. luggage workout. No. Buy buy some kettlebells if you have money to a buy A kettlebell. Things. I was going to say kettlebells are cheap well, and this is good small. If you're in a How are you going to get a kettlebell? You can do so many more workouts. I agree. It's good for traveling because you, you already got a suitcase with you. How are you going to get a kettlebell delivered to your house? They're not delivering kettle kettlebells right now. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. Who? You you can find. Yeah, a kettlebell. they are. What what kettlebells no. are us? Who's Who? they? Bro, you didn't see on the news today. Kettlebells. They're not shipping them any longer. That's not. It true. was just on CNN. Just now. Just no, like five <laughs> minutes ago. Did you see? Uh, uh, Wait, did you guys see what happened? Go on. Did Did you see like five minutes ago? I just like doing that. That's now. been yeah. That's been <laughs> my life that's for been, the last couple of weeks. I pretty much for the next month, that will work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife and I just go. Oh, did you hear this? Did you hear that? Well, in Italy. Well, in India. Well, it, and it's just like a horrible version. Guys, of, there's almost like a competition of, of like news. Like you guys, go like, well, did you hear this cooler news that guys, I heard? Guys, you know? guys, did you hear about Patagonia? What about it? It's oh, gone. Oh God, I. Uh, it, I, I, How's Kentucky I can't doing? Do, I can't, Kentucky, I can't do Mr. President? The, the Patagonia Clothing gone. Company is actually struggling. So Patagonia? Yeah. yeah. I thought Patagonia is like an iceberg. It's a, no, it's it has a actual, glacier on it, but it's a it's a, it's a place. place. I thought it's it was also like a Casc- company. I thought it was like Cascadia. It's just kind of a region. No, no, no. It's a real place. And it's also a clothing company, a sustainable clothing company. That's why I thought it was make believe. Right. Oh. <laughs> I don't know anything. Again, Tierra del listening, Fuego. Yeah, if you're listening to us for actual advice, I we've having recommended said so that, far to do luggage work. Having said that, which I still attest is having a great said idea. that, I think uh, one of the more important things would be to stay mentally sane and healthy during this. You have to. So laughter is good for that. Laughter is good. So laugh at laugh, us, laugh, laugh with it. us, but don't get too stressed out. How's everyone's mental health so far? Week one into quarantine. We're about so I'm one o- week in, right? I'm only two days in, and oh, I think I'm doing better than you guys, but I think I'm deteriorating at a faster rate. I, I'm, which is yeah. interesting. <laughs> that sounds healthy, actually. I like that plan. Rise what, high, it's fall not fast. A, what do you plan to do you when you hit the bottom? Deterioration then. curve, John. Yeah. So I yeah, been, flatten your deterioration curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to. I've been watching that show Lock Up that they used to show on MSNBC on the weekends that's, all the time. That sounds not, like a terrible show. Yeah, to that's, watch not, that's not a good sign. No, it's 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 great advice because you'll see people who are in jail for like six months and they fall apart, and then there'll be people who are there for thirty years and they're right. coping and they're not, they're. You wouldn't consider it thriving because you have a life on the outside, but you know they tell you what kind of mo- like animal they were before they went to jail and how rough the first few years are, and now they like seem like a somewhat fulfilled person. They get like, a that's... good routine going in jail, right? So those are the two things: it's routine and and having something that you have control over. Those seems to be yes. the two things that help with isolation and being stuck in the same place. So like the prison workouts, I got to give Joe a little credit for his luggage stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's like something. working on think, yourself, yeah, improving yeah. yourself, uh, and having and, a routine. Like I wake up every day and I do I do this exact workout, and then I do that, and then you know even. Oh, you're speaking you hypothetically. <laughs> you're not saying you do it. <laughs> no, I actually have a workout. I just haven't started it yet because I was like, I've I'll lost take a couple days off. I've lost no muscle mass. <laughs> I've gained some beer mass, but I've lost mm. no muscle mass from my. Life oh, and get a law degree if you can. That seems to help them. What? Convert to Islam and get a law degree. Oh, for to, the, to survive in jail. Yeah. So those are my plans for the quarantine. They're entirely transferable. Yeah. We should call right. this episode How yeah. to Survive a Quarantine slash Jail. <laughs> we might as well branch out, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I feel like. I'm worried about people who normally are kind of already depressed and repressed. And now whatever interactions they because there's so many people who their thing was they would go to the bodega or whatever, or they would go to the corner store or, whatever. or the gym. Yeah, well, and not t- even that. And just spend, work and spend hours. Or work, yeah. yeah, just talk. The to work is where they talk to people. Then they they shop with headphones in. They don't talk to another human. They self check out and go home. And now they just not having work. What, what do those weirdos do? Mm. Like there was this guy at at the Planet Fitness that I go to that would work out a little bit, but mostly stand there and the, talk to the workers there for hours. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, in fact, what one time I saw a but thing on the news that somebody circles. robbed a store. I was like. That picture looks like that guy. Really? <laughs> but that's a lot of people's social circles is my point. It's yeah, just but, their daily routine. Or, what that or was. going to the bar and, and sitting by yourself and sort of being like there are a lot of bar regulars that their socializing is either with the bartender or they sort of like edge into other people's yeah, like people. social. Well, little that's, that it's, it's not even. The, the, yeah. Well, we well, usually go together. The person, at least. 
Yeah, but you got to think about the person who they've been going to that bar. Like I, I've bartended places where I've been here three years. This person's been coming here 30. Like it's their bar. They've been coming here longer than any other customer or any employee. You know, so it's not even they go for the bartender because they those change every couple of years. They go because that's their spot, and they like that's gone now. Like they, yeah. a lot of bars, there's at least one guy like that uh, who, who's like just been going for like twenty years, ten, twenty, thirty years, and just sits in the same spot, gets pretty much yeah, the same. Shows up at like five routine. thirty p.m. every yeah. day. Yeah, that's got to be weird for those people because there are a lot of I, people that, where that was their that street. was their routine. Yeah, yeah seriously for yeah. for probably thirty years consecutively. I think a fair right. amount of um, well, not a fair amount, whatever the language would be, but I think you're going to see the suicide rates go up potentially. You know, it's interesting you say that because I went to grad school with a. I think he was a suicide a, rate. He, <laughs> dude, God, I think he was, he was an a suicide Afga- rate. I was going to say I th- I'm pretty sure he was an Afghani war vet. And he um, he he worked with some organization like preventing veteran suicides. And he one of the first things he did was he wrote this article. I forget. Right I, on I, me. I forget what for for what Excellent. magazine. But he wrote this article about exactly that, how he expects suicide rates among these groups that are already. Prone I mean, to increase. Yeah. And it's a, and real, it's a real calculation concern. of like. How do you personally deal with the safety from trying not to get a virus yeah. with the long term psychological effects of, for example, if you're like picking up your mail outside every day and yeah. Cloroxing it? Yeah. You know, I think that's going to be a net negative for your health. Why? Yeah, but if you got weak no, kidneys, then you should be doing that. Well, there, there's, there's a, uh, what I'm saying is there should be a calculation, some kind of balance between oh, how at risk you are for the disease. But it, I, I disagree entirely. But I, you're not so imagining like the OCD level but this person. Is all, oh, I'm so this glad is that people are finally stuff. almost as OCD as I am. This is fantastic because people are finally. The thing doing is, things. they're not. Yeah, they are. Most people aren't. I think a lot of people are. I see people walking around with Windex. Pe- people, ha- yeah. What is Windex going to do? I don't know, but at least they're trying. They're making an effort. Now, what is Luke? turning the light switch on and off three times every time <laughs> you leave the room going to do, Luke? None of it does anything. It's just part of. Windex the neuroses, yeah, but if you Clorox you like your your doorknobs or something every you don't. day, that's going well, I mean, to do to Luke, something. To this, I do. To this point, Luke just coughed on me, and I just went and washed my face, as you should. Yeah, you probably should. They say gargling, uh, gargling yeah, with the uh, other way, you <laughs> gargling with whiskey should help. Actually, that's my strategy, Johnny. You know my no sick strategy, right? The whiskey diet. Whenever uh, I whenever I think <laughs> I'm starting to get sick, I take. A bunch of vitamin D, an emergency, and four shots of whiskey, and I'm fine. That sounds about Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Johnny's like it's consistent about... with what I know. Yeah. Of you. I don't know about the four shots of whiskey, Joe, but I do know that if you take like whiskey or anything that has alcohol, like mouthwash, even and gargle in your throat, some like especially this coronavirus yeah. apparently um, it sits builds, in your throat. Still sits yeah. in your throat. That's why it starts with a sore throat. Yeah. You can maybe stop it in its tracks. Yes, yeah, before it this enters is the your thing. lungs. You have to say amounts. maybe. And unfortunately, gargling whiskey is just as credible as some other advice, like malaria drugs. Oh, it's really just going to increase know. your chances, maybe. But yeah, there's yeah, but too I, much but maybe, not but also, knowing. But also, I was My... going to drink the whiskey anyways. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the, the, that's the thing. Like I, I thought the first week I wasn't really worried about this because everyone was like, "Oh yeah, if you're not old and like wheezy, you're fine." <gasps> And much so, better, oh my god, much he better cough. Thank you. But so I was like, Luke okay, I'll be fine. Corona. But they're showing young people. They're like, oh, it's affecting, uh, you know, in not the U.S. elderly, data, but the U.S. Yeah, data like, is a y- lot less um, promising than what came out of China and South Korea. There's is a lot right? of young but, people ho- being hospitalized and or dying. I here. See a few, died but I'm not even that young people. anymore. I'm I'm over thirty. Now, I know. So was, I realized, shit, I'm at just as much risk. To, I still have like a twenty percent chance of being hospitalized if I get this. That's not good odds. Well, there's there's also other factors that they just don't know. Like there's some speculation about blood type. There's speculation that some other genetic factors might be playing a part. But one right. of the things they think point, is yeah. is a is a key factor because a lot of the young people that were getting really sick were medical, like doctors or nurses. So they think it has to do with how much of the virus you come in contact with. So if you mm. just touch a microscopic amount of it and kind of wipe your nose or something, chances are your immune system will get ahead of it. But if you are well, around that's sick the whole patients point of a all vaccine, the time, right? Well, the vaccine's even more like that because it's so a, it's a dead version. I antibodies, think. yeah. Um, but like, if you're a doctor who's seeing patients all the time, apparently, yeah. when you get like high doses. 
what 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 happens when these patients have to go on respirators is that um, at first their immune system is slow to respond, so the virus really takes a hold, and then their immune system freaks out and goes into overdrive. Do you hear that? Yes, yeah, something's shaking. It's it's something some some kind of wall sound. <laughs> I think Luke, Luke looked at me, and I could watch his monkey brain trying to formulate. A, a, a Folks, you're not even hearing this sentence, on the recording. There's like a shaking happening, and then he realized that he knows nothing about electricity, or like, or at least like uh, electrical engineering. Do you think the virus has like re reconstituted in the sewer system? It's listening, Luke. Yeah, it's in the wires now. It's entirely uh, possible. So there is evidence no, that it's if, a grammatically if correct sentence. You want to get as low if you're going <laughs> okay. to get the virus, you want to get as low a dose as possible. What is it like radiation? Well, the thing, <laughs> the thing, the thing that Christ. the thing that's killing people is their immune response. Oh, so that's if like the, the virus Spanish takes flu. a hold, your immune system then goes into overdrive, and your yeah. lungs fill with fluid, and 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 that's why you need to be you put on a respirator. Fever, yeah. So you want to you want to um, one do things that keep your immune system healthy. Yeah, which like drinking ex- Miller Lite and giving honestly, advice honestly, like on how to stay quarantined. Drinking does not do good things for your immune system. It generally weakens it. Um, yeah, so yeah, but I, I'm not. Instead of I used to just go to work and stress about work, and then come home, and, which stress is bad for your immune system. And then I would drink, which is also bad for my immune <laughs> system. And then I would not sleep enough and get up for Wait, work. Wait, but Johnny, day, there's a also counter. bad. The drinking I've gotten rid of two of stress. Them. Right? No, no, but I've gotten rid of the work and I'm sleeping enough now because I don't have to go to work. So although I'm only doing one bad two thing out of three. my immune system. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. this is still a net no, you, gain yeah, to you, stay home and drink through this crisis. I, I mean, look, New York State closed all restaurants and all that shit, and then a week later they closed all non-essential businesses, which is pretty much everything except um, like CVSs and grocery stores. Well, it's a lot of things. It's, a lot of government it's so work. many things. So... What I found funny is that they included liquor stores and beer distributors as you know essential why? businesses because they make money you know off why? of it, right? No, that's what I thought. And then I was talking to an ER doctor, and they were saying there's so many alcoholics in America that if you shut all the liquor stores down, they would all dry out at once, and you'd have a shitload of people with withdrawal symptoms flooding the hospitals, which oh the whole God. point of this is, is to, to keep, keep people, people out of the hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. And... Alcohol withdrawals, fun fact, are one of the worst things uh, you can go through withdrawal-wise. Like heroin feels like you're dying, but alcohol withdrawal you actually ha- have a actually chance of dying you, from. Yeah. Right. It can actually kill you. Like if you murder people and are going through methamphetamine withdrawal or pretty much anything, they just lock you up in the jail cell and let you sweat it out. But with alcohol, they have to handcuff you to the hospital bed. So they realize Joe, we better we, get you a beer then. If we I shut know, down yeah, li- liquor sales, then... Yeah, the the amount of the people, people who are like, used to drinking a bottle a night, um, or even like the people who wake up <laughs> the and, morning, and right. drink, yeah, or people who wake morning. up and have some vodka with their coffee to keep the shakes off. Like, there's a lot of people who go through life and are well. Imagine all the quote, people quote, that kind of do people. that when they go to work, right? They they pour some some shit in right. their coffee and then take a mint as they get out of their car. However, they do it. Yeah. I've never and done like that. this is just not <laughs> this is really not the time. Process. But yeah, now they're but working from home. <laughs> yeah, this is not the time as a society to deal with those people's problems. So we're just we have to let them get a hold of their their booze. That's like the a fifty really year cultural thing. problem, not a a, a, yeah. a three month uh, we're, we're virus fig- outbreak we're problem. That out the, the the, yeah, weeks. the really yeah. crazy thing is the dispensaries by me have been deemed essential on the West Coast, along with the yeah. liquor stores. I think and for a breweries. similar reason, um, for psychological well being, and also because there's so many people that use it. Either if even if they're not, not using it medicinally, like with a medical card, you once it became recreational, you're like, well, I don't need to get a medical card to. to yeah, a lot of buy them it, have so. a medical license, though. Right, they already pretty are much all medical, of them are licensed yeah. as medical dispensaries that are just allowed to sell to the public. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Right. Well, uh, a lot of the places in- it, it's crazy though, because can you imagine if you're in jail in New York making hand sanitizer, and like your your sister can't put money in your commissary so you can afford enough food to eat because they don't give you enough to survive in prison and you also and then you hear that the stores on the west coast are deemed essential and are kept open during a crisis and you're like i'm in jail for a weed crime like what the fuck it's like a shitty that's gotta be a good story it is a shitty vonnegut story isn't it (laughs) just let me point out all the ironies and slap you in the face with them 
<laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what, what I see when I read the news now. All right, Joe, what's yeah, your number much. one tip for, for people listening to stay physically safe from the virus? I don't mean like the mental side, I think, but... I think it's really tough. Luggage workout, right? Well... I mean, like workouts definitely, if mild workouts help your immune system stay well, in its re- best Well, realistically, shape. it's more difficult for different types of people because if you live in, say, New York City, which we're lucky enough not to, yeah, you're, people are just stacked on I think top of each other. There's no avoiding if it. If we don't get it, it will be because we're far enough away from New yeah. York City. Because we've been going out, even today, because we're, plan- we're yeah. planning, me and Tommy are planning on doing a uh, pretty substantial hike tomorrow, probably like at least six miles. And that helps. Like just getting out and walking. Especially that kind helps. of mild exercise. Like yeah. I think really hardcore cardio. You don't need to do that. Is yeah. actually for a day or two, your immune system is um, more decreased. I mean, it's a shock. It's more of a shock. It's a to shock your to your system. Yeah. yeah. Where, whereas walking is walking is probably the, the best, best thing, yeah. most practical thing that the most people mm. most people can do. Just stay six feet from those other fat fuckers, which is and hard to do in a this, lot of places. Yeah. This has been great though, because there's a, a park right by my house that I've taken Joe and Tommy to. Oh, it's fantastic! I'm so jealous yeah. of you right now. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so we, me and Kara, did an hour in there today. But nobody has their dogs off leash like they normally see. Yeah, there right. aren't people. There aren't people like everywhere, like right on top <laughs> of you at like random intersections, not giving you space. Everyone's giving each other space. Everyone's freaking dogs are on leash. Wait, like not running. Johnny, up to you. what's the protocol there with like petting other dogs? Like, what do you mean? I, like, what I mean is, I've noticed like I'm usually the kind of guy that if I'm on the beach and I see someone has their dog either on leash or off leash i'm kind of like hey doggy and then if i see a good signal from the owner like they like you shouldn't be touching people's dogs right now you think so not right no, now. i would definitely not know. right now because the dogs what if the dog the dogs um, don't get just, coronavirus but the owner who then touches the yeah dog might. i was meditating yeah, on the on beach day and a dog for like my a eyes day. are closed yeah. and a dog just jumped on me that's like, what happened. I kind of hurt. Yeah, today I was I walked down the beach and found a quiet little corner. Oh man! And as I'm sitting quarantine. there, I'm like, yeah. oh, the waves are nice. Meditating. Tommy, meditating. he coughed on you. You're done. And uh, I God heard it, I Luke. heard the owner be like, you know, yeah. Ruxy, get back here. And yeah. I'm like, uh oh. And then all of a sudden, like a dog like was just licking my face. I'm like, ah oh, man, I hope that fat fucker didn't have I, corona. I hope, I hope one of us didn't have corona, yeah. right? Um, but I imagine a dog's like. You know, mouth would help kill Corona. All no, the sharp it's teeth. Not that. I don't know it's about you, any you pet it. You pet the dog on the neck know, in the same spot. All the humans pet the dog. Yeah. And if they have Corona on their hand, all right, I'm gonna stop petting dog. dogs. Here's my question to you: Stop petting if, dogs. Strange dogs. If you go up, my dog. If you go up to somebody now and cough in their face, is that considered? Uh, yeah, a guy just got arrested. Is that, that considered attempted murder? With a deadly weapon, a potentially yes, deadly probably. weapon, yeah. it is. Yeah, you would very mm-hmm. easily be able to plead ignorance. No, but they'd also no. be like, "Why are you it's... running up and coughing in people's faces?" What's a coronavirus? I, I just pretend I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I don't have. It doesn't internet. matter. We're in a state of And they'll be like, emergency. "Weird," because Rights you filed for this unemployment bro. claim based on. A, oh, I thought that was something unrelated. Wait, Johnny, you think that it is? It does count as attempted it, it murder. It is. One guy was licking food and filmed oh, it. Like that's I right. saw that. Yeah, he got charged yeah. with the terroristic threats. Which oh, that's probably worse. Anything. It is bad. Wait, what uh, was this guy doing? I didn't hear about that. Yeah, no, he was I heard like about licking this, yeah. food in a supermarket. As like a joke during coronavirus. I don't know and why it these back? people also record yeah. themselves doing it. And then he filmed it, so he got found and charged with terroristic threats of the public because that could have spread to multiple people. And you're you're by releasing a video, you're yeah, creating fear good. over it, and nobody knows what supermarket that's in if it's food yeah. they got. And another guy coughed in somebody's face and was screaming on a subway. I think it was. It was screaming about Corona, and he got arrested with assault with a deadly but weapon. But in his defense, yeah, it's going to be a thing. In his defense, Definitely. that happened every day somewhere in New York way before we even knew Corona existed. People were yelling Corona <laughs> and coughing in people's faces, just like incidentally. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, yeah, there's well, a town they called were, Corona Queens. They yeah, must not be thriving. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> like they were yelling. Nobody's lots moving of, there. Lots of people were yelling lots of things on the New York City public subway and coughing. It's true. King of Corona Italian Ice, great family company. Yeah, I mean, we're not doing well. Yeah, we shouldn't be lawyers. Wait, You're wait, right. Joe. So <laughs> luggage workouts is your number one tip to stay <laughs> right. There's a physically question. healthy. No, 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 not at all. It's uh, uh, just four shots of whiskey. Walk, walking, thought. getting four out, shots of whiskey, out and gurgling walking. whiskey, getting out and walking. Ma- yeah, maintaining like the six mm. feet of distance, not petting people's dogs. Like, oh, and also don't touch stuff when you're out. Like that's another thing that I see people doing is saying, "Let me go to the park and sit on a park bench." No. 
People were yeah. just on that park bench coughing who might have had coronavirus. Yeah, that's a bad idea. It will stay well, on surface. I mean, there's two there's two ways to play the game. You can either say I'm going to consciously not touch my face at all until I wash my hands, or you're going to say I'm not going to touch anything else. Still not a great idea because you can um, touch another part of you. You could itch your arm and then get home and say, "Well, I didn't touch my face. I won the well, game." Well, that's the that's the and poop then you touch hand. Your arm again. The, that's the poop hand conundrum, Luke. It's like you could get poop on your hand. But once you do that, you can't use that hand for anything. I know you got to. You, you don't even assume... want to grab toilet paper with uh, that hand because you a... might contaminate the whole roll. So you I have really to like think that, that way. Yeah. Like you will touch yeah. a door handle. There's poop on that hand now until you can get home and sanitize. Right. Dude, I met like, a guy named aren't Tree that like did that. that to me. Oh yeah, you there, there was a guy. I was I was in a restaurant um, and I I met my friend there. He was like, "Come on down." Like I'm I'm at the upstairs of this restaurant. So I went there. And he's like, you're not going to believe this guy that's been hanging out here. His name is Tree. He's this Irish guy, but he just got back from a compound in South America, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Dude comes up. He's wearing basically like um, a skirt. Like, I like don't know. Like a kilt? Uh, like uh, something kilt? like a kilt, but it wasn't a kilt. Um, and I'm like, oh, this looks like Tree. This has got to be Tree. <laughs> he had two earrings of trees dangling from his ears. Checks out. Yeah. And Pretty good sign. Uh, Kevin goes, hey, Tree, this is my buddy Luke. I'm like, Tree, nice to meet you. And I go to shake his hand. He goes, oh, I wouldn't shake that hand. I just took a nasty shit downstairs. I'm like, yeah, but you washed your hands? He's like, no, there was a guy washing his hands, so I just came up. <laughs> so he just didn't wait what? online. Uh, and then shared all that with you. See, now, that's why you can't touch the buttons in the elevator, because that guy is allowed in the elevator. When he gets in the so, elevator, he's touching the elevator buttons. What are the odds that Tree doesn't yeah. have coronavirus right now? Tree has yeah. it. Tree has it. <laughs> tree tree might whether he knows it I or think not. Tree, tree is the kind of cat that does, hasn't showered for six months, because he thinks he builds a natural immunity from like not showering. Is that what he told mm. you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he smelled like shit. Oh. Yeah. Literally. No, 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 no. He, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't smell like shit. <laughs> And the, the sad part was there was this really hot shit. girl. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> there was this really hot he girl that was a bartender shit. that I knew, and she went to this compound with him. And when she came back, she was like converted to this hippie, not showering thing. Uh-huh. And and she became so not hot, her hair looked like she was on a desert island for like a year. And she was sitting at the bar with no underwear, a short skirt, and like the smell of her vagina was just leaking oh. out into the bar. <laughs> it was seeping. It was oh. seeping. How do you know she didn't have underwear on? Because you could see everything. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, what you couldn't see, you could smell. What you couldn't see, to, you to could be, smell. To well be said. Fair, That's not good. <laughs> to be fair, wearing underwear when you're not bathing doesn't seem like a good idea because you're just trapping everything up. Uh, right? um, <laughs> I'm gonna how go about ahead just don't go say, to the bar and spread eagle then? I'm going to go ahead and say just Well, hey, don't underwear. you tell me how to live my life, all right, Tommy? <laughs> I want to. I want to not bathe, never wash my hands, and eat soup with my hands. Yeah, okay? John, you flail, that's my lifestyle. Johnny, you flail in, in your, your vagina however you like. I you flaunt it anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Flaunt Thank it you. if you got There was it. a great video. I think it was an Italian I lady. Will. She was on like a conference call. She was in her nice work clothes, but like you know, skyping in or something. And her husband's just like reading a book and walks by in his underwear, and she's going like this, like uh, waving her arm, so like get out of here. And he's like, oh shit, I'm so yeah. sorry. And he goes to run out of the room and runs right into the wall. <laughs> it was brilliant that's a problem with a lot of the teachers who are now converting to online learning because they kind of i mean this all happened luckily right around spring break and a lot of schools just extended their spring break to, to the end help everyone figure out how to use Zoom. yeah they realize like yeah. oh we have you know older instructors who have never taught online i stole yeah, five students maybe. from one who couldn't figure out how to switch to online can't figure it out yeah and i'm like give me the students bring them and on they're sharing things that they should not be sharing on their desktops and in their backgrounds people had in porn their there, there's been a few oh, instances sure. of i saw an email from an hr thing being like just so you know when you share your screen it yep. shares all tabs open yep. you know yep. and you went on your lunch break but you kept your screen sharing to the conference room kind of thing and the guy was like <sighs> uh all right. What did you see? Everything. <laughs> Boomer. Now, release. how many students? How many students have a teacher like that who is like, "How do I do this?" And like a student says, "Just uh, Alt F 4 <laughs> Or you know just hit Control Alt Delete. Control five Alt times. Delete. And, enter. <laughs> you know you what's know funny about yeah. Alt F four is that we all laughed, but I guarantee you, there's a, a substantial portion of the population that would 
seriously hear that and say, "Oh, really? That will work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know how many people Sounds don't like write a combination of something? Yeah. yeah, people are listening right now and they're like, "Oh, that would work." Hit You know how many people don't, don't hit all F4 if, while listening to no, the podcast? No, if you really want to know <laughs> yeah, our truth, our number one tip for surviving quarantine, <laughs> hit Alt F4 and you will be enlightened. I guarantee it. <laughs> I wish I could hit Alt F4 on my life and just wake up in June. Uh, do you? But uh, you nah. wouldn't, you wouldn't grow from the experience or potentially die from coronavirus. Mm. I mean, would you, if you had the option to just freeze yourself and just wake up when this is over, would you do it? No. Me neither. Oh, that's, that's no, why I think not. there I think. isn't as much panic in the streets as you would imagine, is a good portion of the country has just decided to start taking their Xanax prescription that they like keep, <laughs> but they don't really right. use. Yeah. They're all Xannied up, being like, I'm just trying to fast travel. I'd be this. curious about the so data on gonna... Xanax prescriptions. Yeah, what's a lot of I mean, I know a lot of people who have it and they're like, yeah, you know, I'll take like a half of one every few days if I feel anxious or like, uh, you know, if work is really stressful, but they don't take it like, you know, every eight hours or 12 hours or whatever, like the max dosage doses. And I, I just feel like this is the time for people like, well, I'm stuck home and I'm freaking out and I can't do anything about it. So I'll just pop a Zanny and put some music on. Have you I, seen I think that? I think the p- pharmaceuticals in our society are, are helping us out right now. That and all the booze. It, booze is probably uh, through the roof. But have you seen the data for the Pornhub traffic? And Steam. That's Steam, been going Pornhub up. Pornhub and Netflix Video games, is porn, all skyrocketing. Alcohol. So Pornhub offered yeah. free p- premium membership to first to Italy when they I saw, uh, made I a lockdown, that, yeah, yeah. then to Spain and France. And I'm not sure if they've done it in the U.S. yet. Honestly, I'll check that out. Like <laughs> I've never, I've never sprung for Pornhub Premium, Pornhub, but if it's free, like why porn, not? Porn, Pornhub, <laughs> if you're looking to sponsor a podcast, this this podcast is reverse sponsored by Pornhub <laughs> Premium. Thunk, Thunk, Go to pornhub.com/slash/premium and enter code word Thunk today. Thunk Hub, you know and we're back. Do you know what's scary about that? That's by far our most reasonable reverse endorsement we've ever done yeah <laughs> like they're usually they would probably be down for us to reverse they might spot. be down whereas yeah. american airlines would be like yeah our lawyers are going to contact Here's you if you do that again order. yeah uh, please don't mention us ever like we don't want to be associated with you. um so tommy what's your number one um, well you know joe only physically, mentioned like physically. six or seven of them yeah I know. <laughs> which one all of them <laughs> luggage workouts um, and one. i was gonna say going walking for just two. yeah hiking or anything like that i was originally gonna say that otherwise i would say try to find some sort of creative outlet something you can do something mm-hmm. some sort of hobby or just something you can develop each day uh you know whether it's yeah, like yeah, a long term right yeah like, if yeah. it's trying yeah. to learn Medium to play term. something like a musical instrument or totally. if you're playing a video game or if you're reading a book or something yeah. just find something right. that you can work on every day chess play a game every day maybe if you draw try to draw the same picture every day try to get better then you have a page each day of you getting better each day don't um, hit the mic when you're talking no try yeah, not to hit try the mic each podcast not to hit know. the mic and ruin the whole thing <laughs> yeah you know these are all s- s- options but you know yeah um yeah so you know just try to find something to keep yourself busy. i like that think of it as an opportunity yes right. yes i take it one day actually, at a time that's actually a great, take it well, great one day at a time uh, I'm getting a lot of drinking done in this quarantine. So. Yeah. yeah, I had to cut back. I haven't drank in. Uh, Luke- so week one was a week <laughs> one was a party week for anyone that hasn't bad, been yeah. uh, listening for the past yeah. few episodes. Uh, Joe moved in, let's say, really close to where I live. Yeah, we we built a new studio. We built we a built a studio. studio. Yes, we had one built. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Call it what it is. It's a compound. There there is a uh, there is a survival compound thunk tank now where if you, you guys are waiting this out if you notice sure. that luke is jet that's me by the way i'm speaking in the third person if yeah, you i know- like how you act like people know who we are <laughs> yeah actually some of them do. some of them do some of them don't thank yeah, you for your uh, support like share and subscribe i um, appreciate it if you notice that i sound more drunk from episode 80 onward it's because yeah. the podcast studio moved um below you <laughs> within a 30 second walk of where i live yeah. not even I think you could do it in like twelve. Well, no, on 20. the way on the way back after like five beers, it's thirty seconds. Probably best on the to way play here, it safe, it's yeah. like ten. <laughs> Probably best to play it safe. Yeah. The other cool thing you can do, like what Tommy was saying, was like learn a language. Mm, like if you just idea. if you yeah, go like, all right, idea. I kind of want to learn German. Like just do twenty minutes a day and see where that gets you at the end of the quarantine. You might be yeah. like, hey, this is kind of cool. I kind of know German now, and you yeah. would have never done that if you had to like. Get make your coffee and be out of right. the door by yeah. nine a.m. to get yeah. to work. Take or some this shit. opportunity of all this free time to do yeah. something. Yeah, don't just something. be a piece yeah. of shit. Even if 
you're getting full salary it's very from your work and you can be. Yeah. Try to make it a positive experience in some way. Can I offer another actual piece of advice? Because that was pretty actual. So was Tommy's. No, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Oh, I, another I, I actual. Follow, yeah. follow in the yeah, you should have I said, thought you can stressed I actual. actual. Yeah. actual. <laughs> well, I'm not used to saying that on this podcast. Yeah, that's true. But um, in, in the newfound tradition of actual solutions or, or advice... <laughs> um, because I so I teach uh, college and I have a lot of remote work to begin with because it's p- people giving students giving me papers or grading stuff online whatever or giving you excuses for why they didn't do the paper that mostly <laughs> yes. yeah. um so, which are more well written than their papers sadly <laughs> oftentimes um, so a lot of that I take home with me and I actually really struggle I I don't do well doing work at home because there are so many distractions. Uh, and so I'll usually do a lot of grading either at the library or the local coffee shop. or Somewhere that isn't home. Yeah. Right. Somewhere where I can detach myself from those distractions. And that's very difficult now. And a lot of people who don't have that awareness at all to begin with because they've never been working from home. They've always gone to their place of work to do their work. I could see that being a real <laughs> challenge for a lot of people. They have so, to learn how to do it. Right, yeah. And you can't go out now. So I would say one thing that you can do is like try to formulate some routines in terms of how you structure your mornings and uh, you know have a familiar pattern to getting to a point where you say like okay this is you know when I'm gonna make sure that I, I take care of these things so that you're able to do the work or manage doing the work in a relatively timely fashion because a lot of it isn't necessarily synchronistic where some of it is where it's like yeah you have to be online talking to people or, or something through these hours but some of it is like okay here's your work get it done by tomorrow yeah you know so you have Which to is dangerous you have to sort of schedule that out and it's easy just to be in your bed trying to do that work on your laptop and you're not going to get anything done so moving to like a specific place if you have yeah if you, you have a big enough space where you can do that yeah, yeah. That, that can help too having yeah. a I, I almost thought about today setting up like a little desk in our bathroom. My fiance, <laughs> who's currently my fiance. Yeah, your current, current um, fiance. That's your current fiance? Yeah, my current. Yeah, oh, yeah, current. Yeah. oh okay. She's good. No, yeah. she's a good one. Yeah. yeah the last yeah. one was like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Probably hold on to this one. She was teaching a, a Skype lesson in the room, and I was like, I wanted to finish writing a, an article I was working on. You could have came here um, to the studio. Well, I, I, I had two choices. I was going to definitely gonna, get work done in the studio. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, oh, yeah, no, I, I never come here to get work done. That's true. That advice <laughs> I just gave you, I don't fault. Any yeah, of, but it's good advice. <laughs> but we have these shelves in the bathroom. And I was like, oh, if I pull this uh, certain chair we have into here and clear the towels off the shelf, that could actually be a desk. I would feel like I'm in a tiny like cubicle. Like, You're doing the Kramer version of never leaving the shower, but never getting off your toilet. Instead. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I decided to try to write around? at the beach, and it was too cold. My fingers why don't, wouldn't work. Why, That's true. Luke, the toilet, is, it's the, it already is the desk of the bathroom. You just turn oh, wait, around Wait, what did you call that in bowl? our toilet episode oh, where yeah, you eat a right. meal... Uh, it's a Sir Harrington. The Sir Harrington, yeah. yeah. Can you please... I did not invent that. That's you, a real can thing. Can you please, for, for the folks who sadly missed out on our toilet episode go back if you uh yeah, go, that, oh, go yeah back. if you're really bored you during the quarantine reiterate what is a sir herring <laughs> it's where you turn around where the tank is facing you on the yeah. toilet and so you have somewhere to put your milk and cookies <laughs> while you're taking a shit <laughs> or writing notes or Why doing work or whatever it is i thought it was so that you could hug the tank you're on the no, toilet wh- in the first you, place because you drink you milk think, and cookies <laughs> why do you think the tank was put there at that height you're facing to the, hold wrong the water way. most people are sitting <laughs> the wrong way to hold the right amount of water not to put no. milk and cookies as a table no it's the perfect height to use or put your book on while you're reading like it's why would you just sit there and just lean over like a maniac. Because like I want to. I want to be in, in a dugout. As as, like, come on, as fast as possible. I'm not looking to. Well, then that the that's when gripping that bowl for dear life comes in handy sometimes to get you through. Does it. anyone it's know like why? the mass? You like Odysseus on the ma- ship's mass sometimes. Do you have you your ever wife, had one of those ships? Do you have your wife? <laughs> do you have your wife plug your ears to drown? No, out go your own on screen. and tell us yes. about the Odysseus. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep going. Do you have to blindfold yourself? Yeah, or? His, his wife. His wife. I have to strap Kara to the bathroom door, and then she plugs my ear full of ear of beeswax yeah. and i have to s- squeeze the bowl this is such a weird grecian shit metaphor oh, Jesus. this is fantastic what quarantine advice. i know that uh, much johnny what's your number one tip for <laughs> saying mentally healthy i mean I, you already said All the right, prison well, thing with like routine i think that's a that's a good one and joe did a great job of stealing that too, i know i noticed me. he did that uh, when did i do that just now when you said i'm gonna give an actual one Oh, well, you started it. I wasn't planning so, on giving actual advice. I started so routine, routine is good, but <laughs> yeah, you, 
too much of a good thing, too much of anything is bad. And, and people might fall into too much of routine, especially routine oriented people where they go to work and they come home and the, the, the variables and randomness of their day was at work and that's gone now. You kind of have to throw that in yourself. So maybe you don't walk the same way every day. Right. Maybe yeah, yeah, you walk yeah, yeah. at the same time or, you know, the first half of your walk the same area. Like by me, I have these trails so I can walk those trails every day and take a different configuration. Yep. Yep. And, and not repeat it for a week. That's uh, what I've been doing. Find, as well. find little things. Yeah. To, to, and, and find excitement in the little things like that. Like, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. Or like, get excited about what can of soup you're going to eat today. Well, Cause, uh, you know, that's just how you stay sane. One of the cool things I've noticed I'm, I'm doing more of is trying to, what you just said, like appreciate the simple things like, oh, we're going to take a walk through this little neighborhood up the hill today, and I'm going to really pay attention to all the details of the houses because, like, what the fuck else am I doing yeah, today? Right. I have mm-hmm. noticed a lot more people walking. Wait, because People I, seem more present. Yeah, right? we, we yep, walk yep. much more. People are saying hello. And people are also walking not on their phones, I notice, too, because they, I think they, they spend get, all day at home well, on their well, phones. Well, yeah. they want to yeah. disconnect. Away. Yeah, they want to get away from the corona yeah. thing. And they know what they need to do in public with social distancing. So they're just kind of walking. And you're right. You see them looking at the houses, looking at the trees, looking at you and being like, oh, hey, from over yeah. here, whatever. I, yeah. I, I don't think have good, cable. I think that's a good thing. Johnny, do you have cable? I know you guys no. don't. So like, no. I just had dinner at my mom's and she has cable and she had the news on. And 10 minutes into sitting in the chair, I felt all this anxiety bubbling up in my system it was talking about all these 20 and 30 year olds that are either on ventilators or had died and it was just like negative thing after negative thing and i was just like oh my god like i don't feel well and i was like oh i'm just gonna flip it to jeopardy and then i felt better yeah (laughs) well because you have to be careful about what information you're taking in and and that's that's their business model it's supposed to it it, it, and look to the extent that that it keeps people the fuck in their house and to take well that's part of the part seriously i can understand that yeah but you also should be honest with people because if you're the media and you generally lie to people then when you tell them the truth it's the boy who cried wolf problem people will just not really take you seriously and I think that happened at the beginning stages of this. People didn't take the the media seriously. Yeah, I mean, people, including Trump. Well, people didn't take the the whole thing seriously. For Experts kind, too, for, yeah, for kind of way too long. Yeah, Trump included, and that's unfortunate. But uh, the sad thing, the scary thing is that is that there's still, I mean, as far as I can <laughs> tell, there's still people who are kind of like eh. nonchalant about it. And it's like I know. was more nonchalant, certainly, like in the beginning of March. Oh, for sure, um, yeah. I, I kind of was like, I, I I personally don't know how to trust the media yeah. in, in this current state but right when, now. But when you actually look into the experts, like you say, like the the medical experts, which I eventually did, yeah, yeah, and 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 what they're and you realize, okay, there's a consensus here in terms of how real and impactful, well, like how serious in terms this of is. how real even a point six death rate is. Um, and the That's concerns real. might not be what yeah. you initially think of, which is like there's a zombie virus spreading through the air or something. It's more like, oh, when hospitals get overrun, then people don't have anywhere yeah. to go when there's a heart attack. Right. Or a kid like I, I know a musician friend that that just got kidney stones last night. Like what bad timing to get that, Eesh. you know? Yeah. You don't want to go to the ER right now. I'd, I'd really try to stay home and piss that shit out. Well, that sounds weird. Piss that stone out. Yeah, you don't want to piss. That's that my shit, piece of advice. You is, don't want is to, to stay home stone when you have kidney stones, stones, and we should put a disclaimer at the stay front of this. Stay home with the stone. <laughs> you should definitely stay home not and get stoned with your Luke stones. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Let's officially disclaimer: do not take our medical advice. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll put one in the front too. Like yeah. we, we should really be careful about that. It's funny because the luggage article I wrote, I say at least twice. Yeah, don't do this. I I wrote I wrote a article about cold showers that I put out last week, and then I was like, should I put the thing that I've seen on a lot of YouTube videos, which says, "Don't do this. Talk to your doctor first. Yep. It's just like a good, safe, do. like don't. don't but that's the click here for terms thing. and service thing, yeah. into the yeah. opposite. When you say that, people are like, oh, "Okay, so they want me to do it. They just are saying wink, wink with this." Like, They're no, I'm putting just saying in you his can't article. Blame me. That's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. obvious it's that you, that you're still yeah. the whole article is advice to to do it, and then you say, "Yeah, but don't do it." No, but actually do it, but don't well, if, blame it, me for it, Johnny, if I were talking to you about, oh, I found a lot of benefit from taking cold showers, blah, 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 and you go, yeah, but I have this heart problem. I see a doctor every year for it. I would go, yeah. maybe ask that ice. cat about it. 
No, because the shock of when the cold water hits you can send your heart if you already have... Like, my mom has a pacemaker, I think. Yeah. I, I'm not going to tell her to do right. it. Or you're going to tell her at least... Shit, maybe I did already. Well, Don't do it. <laughs> you're going to tell her at least go see your actual cardiologist or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Have him tell you, oh, yeah, that's just like whatever. Which is fine. What you're going to want to do is to cover yourself in fridge magnets. And get the <laughs> water as cold as you can. And jump in. Wrap yourself in copper wire to create an electromagnetic force, and that will just make your pacemaker run forever without ever having to plug it in. Do they plug those in? What are powers those? I things? think you got to get the battery replaced every so often. I think right? so. Yeah, they if, just go inside you and change it out. Jesus. Yeah, you so that get sucks right now surgery, if your pacemaker yeah. is low and you're like, fuck, when is this corona going to end? I got to go in for change. Um, I'm not quite sure how that works. She has a device in her room that I I don't I, I don't know how it works. Or I think well they have those charging mats now, so why can't yeah. they charge the battery? No, I, I think they might have like skin, I think they right? might have like a plug that you maybe or like there's a battery somewhere else that's more easily accessible. So cyborgs, basically. I'm kind pretty of... I'm pretty sure there there's something mm. that's more accessible than the original. Yeah, <laughs> but even, Joe, even the original surgery that puts the thing in yeah. is, is quite subtle. It's not like open heart surgery. No, no, no. How That's about this, I mean. guys? Not, here's here's, here's a would you rather ish option right now. Yeah. Would you take total replacement of your olfactory system? We're going to take it out and we're going to put in a robotic one that can filter out coronavirus. But oh, everything you smell and taste from here on out is going to be programmed. It's going to be really good. You probably won't even notice the difference, but it will all be artificial. Would you take that deal? So when what? I smell... Um, the the chicken curry that I'm making on the stove, it will still be chicken curry, but it will be like the programmed version of it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So it still smells like chicken curry to me, but I just don't think it's yeah. real. Well, this is the whole. It might not be real, anyways. What is real? Wait, this is the Matrix question. So, so two right. two points. First of all, I'm glad that you're watching Westworld clearly, and second, yes. of, <laughs> because Johnny said yeah, before, that's a Westworld Johnny influence question. Uh, Johnny mentioned right before he started that he started crushing Westworld, which I do recommend, I, I, regardless of what your doctor says. I'm still pretty sure this is a simulation, even with yeah all the Corona stuff going on. Like, it's nothing's really oh, convinced I mean, me yet. I think if you are in simulation um, suspicion. You're only a little bit more sure of it now. I think so. I went for the yeah. same walk today that I did a few days ago, and I definitely saw a house, and I said, that house wasn't there last walk. No way. Yeah. That, I mean, there's the a chance is, of that. The house is purple as hell. It was not there before. I, mean, I have noticed. Have painted it. I have noticed. Well, now that you're being reasonable. My, my psychology is getting <laughs> slippier, slip, slip slipperier than it was Keep going. more slippery that than was it tough. was that was really tough like a week ago i'm i'm no you're right it's a little more slippy it's, slidey it's, it's not as if i'm <laughs> fully convinced by simulation now but i'm one percent more at least yeah mm. yeah one percent more in that direction so jumping Tommy, back to pacemakers real quick they last up to 10 years and when yeah. you get it replaced it's about a 30 minute surgery depending on the individual that's what i thought yeah and what they do is take a little like a uh, slice in your skin they don't put you out it's a local anesthetic in the oh, area really? they put a little incision there the battery or generator that they fix or replace or whatever they do it's right above the skin there it's so, so that the that other in, part is deeper and the battery is shallow. Correct, the wires run into there. Yeah. They replace that, and then, you know, if that's screwed up, then they have to do real surgery. But what they do is do that, and then they stitch it up with uh, dissolvable stitches right after that. So it's oh, really yeah, not that big of a thing. Wow, I, thought, really, I thought it'd be more complicated. They really figured that shit out. Yeah. You, but, that's the kind of, that I love medical technology like that, where you yeah. can, like, have, like, a, a electronic safeguard for your heart that, yeah. like, yeah. it's not a big deal to put yeah, in. You got to stand in lime out. juice and hold two potatoes every week. <laughs> yeah. All right, Johnny, what, what's your, because um, uh, you and I are both living through quarantine with a significant other. Well, current. Me, my current other. fiance, yeah. you, your current, current wife. Yeah. My current wife, uh, yeah. If you don't know that joke, then figure it out. Uh, <laughs> also, my, do no, if, my if, dog is here, too. Your current dog? If you don't, if you don't, know, if you don't know that joke, just hit Alt-F4 and you'll find yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. figure out hit everything. Hit Alt-F4, download all button <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like share and subscribe and and subscribe on patreon for as little so what as was one your dollar question a month about oh about like my what, current wife? G- give the listeners some tips for like how to survive a quarantine with a significant oh. other so you don't murder each other so it might have seemed like a bad idea and go against like most husbandy survival instincts but within an hour of the quarantine my wife did something that really annoys me and has been annoying me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to. It's gonna, worth bringing up now. It, gotta, gotta uh, it's worth now. bringing like up now. Like a band-aid. 
right yeah, off. Yeah, and 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 she was, and she, and you know, she's very mature too. So she was like, "Thank you for bringing that up and for feeling comfortable talking to me." I was like, "Yeah, I realize if we were stuck together for two months, and I just it, if I waited that long for it to come up, it wouldn't be good." So yeah, and, and she's like, "Well, thank you for bringing it up." Well, now. because it would be like the repressed on. version that bubbles up in in a non, let's say, wise way. And it'll come out in a bunch of other ways first. I have a challenge for all that. male Funk Tank listeners who are husbands of some kind. I want to run an experiment. Don't do any dishes for as long as you can don't and see how that in. goes. Yeah, <laughs> don't, 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 I was about to get, you just asked, I was about to give the opposite advice. I was about to say, do now, all like, dishes. Yeah. Domestic, I was talking to a guy who's, this is all secondhand, but whose friend is in a local police department. And he was saying they're really only dealing with like life and death stuff right now. They're not uh, trying to fill the jails up with petty stuff. Yeah, they're not trying sense, to yeah. stretch their resources. So go ahead and chop this from CBS. <laughs> so yeah. they... I mean, no. Like, no. I blew Don't past a cop going 55 and a 35 the other day, and I got nothing. And I have out-of-state plates, and he just didn't... Well, because you just put up... Wait, saw me. you just put up the cardboard sign in your window when he pulls you over that says, I have corona. Yeah, Johnny, yeah, I have right. fever. Out-of-state yeah. plates yeah. to him signal, oh, this fucker has been traveling through a lot of states filled with corona. Mm. I guess so. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. maybe that's a good thing. But um, they said domestic violence is good. Car accidents are way down. Uh, like violent crimes are way down, except home. for domestic violence, like assaults and stuff. And oh, like yeah. Robberies are down. That's but, sad. That makes sense just by the numbers, though. But like, yeah, you, you put people together in the same place long enough. They're, mm -hmm. You know, so a certain amount of it, people are going to do, you know, things yeah. are going to happen. So far, we I've, I've kept the kid gloves on with. With my current fiance. What does that mean? Like, why do you own kids' what? gloves? No, metaphorically speaking. I hope so. Elaborate. Uh, meaning, like, like um, I think they mean like kid gloves. Like those. You do have tiny hands. Like, like. No, kid, they're really strong like though. Goat child. Okay. <laughs> Can you put your hands over mine just for the website though? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you don't know that reference, you Good. know what to do. Yeah, you know what to do. Hold that for. No, kid gloves are like nice. Those nice white gloves that like Cinderella that, wears. Is that not an expression? No, that's Michael it Jackson. Is. You're okay. thinking of. Go, go on. So go I, on. I meant like, um, you know how like, <laughs> like dogs, <laughs> dogs or cats will sort of have like play fighting in the house instead of like real like I'm rip, trying to rip your throat out fighting. Is that what you do with your current fiance? I don't know. I mean, like just generally, it's like a good <laughs> an answer. valve relief where it's like you just walk into the kitchen, you're like, you're a piece of shit, and you're just like, what? oh, I feel better. <laughs> until until you're just doing that as so that that remember to my normalized point. Yeah. remember <laughs> Kurt yeah, that leads Luke, to my you point. are you are who you pretend to be no I'm not pretending yes. <laughs> I know that's that's my point yeah is I was gonna say now is a great time to work on your relationship because you're gonna no be seriously forced, we have been doing that more like um, you're you're gonna be forced using, to deal using with that these as things. an excuse oh, okay. you're gonna be forced to face these things sooner than later because of all of this and close quarters stuff. So, like, now is the time to work it's on good that. Stress no, Johnny, what you said was exactly the right, um, the right approach, which is if you can bring something up that bothers you calmly in a way that's like, no big deal, just want to let you know, like, there's this reaction that that thing causes in me. It's probably me that's the problem, but I'm not sure so, how to fix that wiring in my brain. So that's if why it's easy you say, for you to fix, you know, go ahead and do it. You piece of shit. That's why you say, you hey, <laughs> yeah. we, like, I'm sick and tired of doing these fucking dishes. We should share the load more now rather than a month of it. Because once you wait and there's a mountain of dishes that are like stuck to the sink, like, that's too big of a thing to, to approach. At this yeah, point. the chaos has be... entered into your realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The infections Man. in your blood at that point. You, you just you're gonna just be angry and yelling about everything because your kitchen's disgusting. Uh, we've noticed so, like simple things like making the bed every morning, making yeah, sure um, you you like you just said like do the dishes every day instead of waiting every four days. Things like that make make a sense of order within the house that you're stuck in, and you're much less likely to feel that. Like I I I've felt more irritable the the, the past three days. And I've noticed it's just because, like, even the beautiful place we live where we can walk to the beach, I'm kind of like, this fucking beach again? <laughs> well, that's why we're, we're going for a different walk tomorrow. Where are you going? Yeah. We're going to go to the um, the green green way or whatever. Oh, you're going to walk this at Satake? Yeah, yeah, the, thing, one, yeah. the one right up the road. And I was just talking to somebody else, and there's apparently a lot of others that I didn't even know about. And I'm the type yeah, of... Yeah, I was going to ask point you if, if you want to yeah. go to... Um, a lot of good areas. There's a cross if, island. If you want to, if you want to drive somewhere and go to like one of the trails, you can actually get lost in a little bit. Yeah, like that'd that, be fun. that. Like that could be a cool all day thing. That's a, a different yeah. hike than by the beaches. Yeah, 
and and this is actually pretty cool because normally and and the place where we live it's not known for longer hikes and it's a shame because i love doing a 12 13 14 mile hike in a day like no problem but if you don't yeah, have that you kind of have to what it's a bit much what yeah, 13 is That's a lot. lot. <laughs> no, it's not. Seven, a six se- mile hike is solid. Seven, six, six mile hike. You're walking, to eight you're walking is two solid. to three miles per hour. 13 miles is a six lot, mile yeah. hike, do, a couple of hours. You, hike, that's, you, walk, that's a good you hike. walk for like 10 hours. That's like a 12, 13 mile hike, at least. No, that's a trek. I walked 17 once. It's a journey. When I was at you guys are, a, a you guys younger are fellow. Uh, we, we, I do know a guy. What happens? I have a question. What happens to people doing the Appalachian Trail right now? Oh, Joe was talking about this. Yeah, some the other of them day. don't know about coronavirus because I've met people on the Appalachian right? Trail who they told me that, oh, you're the first person I've talked to in weeks. Uh, yeah. So there's definitely. I, I know there was a that- guy who's. Uh, one of the guys who hired me actually is is hiking the Pacific Coast Trail. Yeah, and no one's heard from him, and they shut down campgrounds. You're not allowed to. Sleep is that what it's called, the Pacific Coast Trail? Yeah, the uh, yeah, it's kind of there. Kind of a late yeah, name, a big one the out, PCT. Yeah. yeah, the PCT. Appalachian it's a big, Trail it's a big has this cool trail. feel. Pacific yeah, Coast is very literal. You're saying it wrong, but the Appalachian Trail is also just the AT. They call it the AT. The ATV. No, the AT. <laughs> just like they <laughs> call the it AT the PCT. You gotta have you gotta have your uh, AT your initials, bro. Uh, yeah, so there's definitely people who don't know about it for sure. Yeah. But well, there was that just German like think about it. You're just hiking. You come into town, and the whole town's boarded up. And they see an outsider, and they say you're not welcomed here, and you just go back into the woods. You're, and you're like, like, oh damn, oh, fuck, uh, the world ended. Found a weird town. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's always that's mostly the Appalachian Trail people, because a lot of people that you'll talk to on something like the AT, they'll be like, What's yeah, that? yeah, <laughs> they'll be like, yeah, you know, I've been hiking it for you know ten years now, and then you realize, oh, you're just a homeless person, like, right? You don't, yeah, you just you, live in the woods, yeah, you just live in the woods and. Uh, we're trail people. people now, Johnny. Did you hear about yeah, that German have... reality show where they didn't even they they were closed off from from all contact with the outside world for the last two months, and they had to tell him a couple days ago, like they were like, we're going to actually interrupt the reality show, which was supposed to go on for another few weeks, and tell them like what's going on. Why? I don't know. Are I are mean, they, it would have been safer show? for them, but they, I think I think morally they just thought like. Um, this is extenuating circumstances. Like maybe they have family who who knows what reasons they might have to want to bail on the show. If, if they find out what's happening or something, I don't know, but it's kind of funny, man. Like Joe was asking me this, like, what would you have said if, if I said like on January 1st, like, Hey, by, um, by the end of oh, yeah. March, you're going to be getting a UBI, check from the trump administration no yeah that's the thing it's that, <laughs> it's that yang yang will have dropped out of the race and before spring, and you're gonna it, trump's sending you a cash ch- yeah to, ubi yeah. Deposit. i would have even a check. i would have said like haha that's that's a really shitty dystopian novel like what else do you have can you do better yeah like, i wouldn't have believed it for yeah for a hundred dollars yeah or a million dollars yeah that's an un, that's a not a very creative storyline you can do better exactly yeah Right. Well, so like but part of it was like that's how weird it e- all even is. though at that time, if you're like a follower of the news hardcore, you would have known about this um, novel coronavirus in China. But you would have been like, that sounds like a China problem, um, which like, is what we always do. Well, I don't know if you saw the headlines the other day. There, there, there was a guy who tested positive for um, what's the name of that lupus? other, is it other lupus? virus in China, a new virus. Oh, God, um, there's a new one. Uh, the the um, Dear God. the it's it starts with an H. It's a really famous one, but HIV? Like, there, there's um, it's been around for a while, but H-track? it it ter- turns out that it doesn't transmit to human hemorrhoids. It doesn't transmit from human to other human very easily. Heracles. Um, it's called hematosis. No, anyways, I for- oh, oh oh god damn, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, you get guess how you Hanta get this virus. Hanta, yeah. Um, you get it from eating rats. So just don't eat rats. So I think one of the big problems is we've got to do something about this. Like, like they've known about um, bats and the correlation between n- novel coronaviruses and bats for a long time. That's how they study these these types of viruses. Um, and let's let's just make a policy around the world that we're such an interconnected interconnected global world. Let's not eat bats anymore or anything that might cause like millions of people to die based on like a random mutation 
Have you ever tried really yeah. good? Have bat? you ever tried Batman? <laughs> Apparently, Batman. Uh, I'm just reading the news now. As we cast this, New York's numbers are are not dropping, but like leveling off a little bit they better are, yeah. than they were hoping. They're increasing and, less. Yeah, yeah. the right. the derivative. And New Orleans yeah. is yeah. New Orleans is blooming though because they had Mardi Gras a month ago. Yeah, but and they all Florida is about to, to bloom too with all that yeah, spring but, break but, shit. But Louisiana and Texas and all yeah. these fucking places decided that old people aren't are sacrificable for the economy that can we discuss that really quick <laughs> yes. there is a real interesting philosophical th- question we're trying to it's utilitarianism addressing. versus like you know consequential uh uh i mean versus um uh, and an- antologi- an- anyways oh. it's about right. is about anyways. it's about do you want to live in a society where we just decide that we just decide yeah it's worth culling yeah. essentially that portion of the population and just deal with well, two questions, which you can't even do it's two yeah, questions. It Joe. So the question is, the do you want to live in a society where edibles hit we me. make that decision? That's a good and question. do you want to live in a society <laughs> where that is a decision? Because like if things were set up differently, like, you know, there's no loss of profits. There's no stock price. Yeah. There's none of that to worry about. If the if the value is like human capital and that gross national happiness, then you you would be like. But it from, wouldn't make sense to let people die. That's true, but it, from, it's but from a practical perspective, it's also just so narrow-minded and stupid. Because even if you want to go that route and say, "Yeah, look, we can't close down the economy for however long. People are going to die. It's inevitable." They're not doing, as far as I've read, otherwise they're not doing enough to deal with the overload of the healthcare system in a lot of. Well, also, places. it hasn't been that's, overloaded yet. We're we're exactly. about a week or two in New York. They, Which is they, good that that, that they said in Como our county alone, there's this, only like 50 apocalypse. ICU beds left. Yeah. So we're not at capacity yet. But the problem is we're looking at the curve peaking but in New, two weeks. But in New, New York, York is also being much more. It's probably about as, uh, the most proactive state compared to any other state because they're converting hotels. They're converting campuses. Yes. Dorm rooms and campuses. Did you see the speech space? by the um, the um, like they're doing Army Corps of Engineers do. guy? They're, it actually made me kind of proud to be American for a second. I didn't see that. This guy did a press conference, and it was his for turn. For a second. To, well, I, I, yeah, for, <laughs> for a quick second. It was a flash. Um, he, it was his turn to kind of come up and speak and just give the update. And he did a two-minute just kind of like the most efficient. He's like, we're doing this. We got people going into hotels. Hotels are going to do this. You restructure the power cords, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You get the nurse's station in the hallways. You can do that with three days of work with my engineers. You go into dorm rooms. You yeah. do this. You can go into big gymnasiums and set up yeah, a big I, common area. The, and, and I don't know why the boom, boom, boom. The army I was like, isn't Damn, doing that People everywhere. can really snap into gear if they have to. You know what if, I mean? If they're if they're pushed to do it. Yeah. Which, which is if what the motivation York, is there. Which is what New York is doing, thank God. That's why everyone's freaking out about like supply chains, supply chains, like they're going to break down. That'll be the end times. It's like we have people who have master's degrees in logistics and just that, yeah. and supply yeah. chain logistics in only that, and analytics yeah. and stuff <laughs> in just true. that. And it's like yeah. that. This is those people. Time, this is why you have such a diverse, up. specialized society is so that you can tap these motherfuckers <laughs> when shit like this goes down. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just I mean, I get it. You, states that aren't taking it as like New York is taking this like it's. You know, I, I mean, I think my I state that, isn't taking it that seriously. Oregon, I live in Oregon, and the the outbreak, the U.S. outbreak started in Washington State. That's true, yeah. And Oregon was very slow to respond. If you look at the numbers in California and Washington and Oregon, ours look are way underreported because you can't get tests here. There just aren't hospitals. There's just there's nobody's doing them. You can't get them. People mm-hmm. say, "Hey, I think I have symptoms." They say, "Okay, stay home for two weeks." Yeah, that's been the that's just, been the vibe yeah. everywhere, though, pretty much. But New York is doing more tests than anywhere in the world. And they're the city's, still understaffed. The city's already but, starting like, to get the federal overrun. government realizes yeah, there's so many people in New York. But that's and also, New York is so yeah. tied in with that whole region with the, like a hundred million people. So. It makes sense to clamp it down there. But that's also what, what why we're getting in, in. That's part of the problem. We don't know if we have so many cases just because it's, you know, it's this is where there's a lot of people. That's part of it. But part of it is the fact that we're testing so much, which is great because then we can quarantine those people. And that's, I think, why that, that curve is starting starting to flatten, which is fantastic. But it's also scary to think that there's no way that I think the next the state with the next highest amount is California with 2000 or, or it's a tenth of whatever New York's is like New York's is 
forty thousand cases or confirmed. It makes cases sense. Or LA's the second biggest city. But I, my point is, a lot of other places have a fraction of what we have, but they don't really. It's not that they actually have a fraction of what we have. They just haven't tested for it, which is really scary. Right. So I'm way but, more scared but, of that I, for those. But I, I'm yeah. also um, optimistic about that fact because it's possible what to do something about what it. is like oh That's 20 percent of people have to be hospitalized. Let's say no matter what age, because the data coming from the U.S. is a little bit less promising with that. When it, the data from China seemed to say if you were older, like 75, 80, 85, it's going to hit you hard. Yeah. But younger people mostly don't have to worry about it. The data from the U.S. seems to be a little bit counter to that. Like a lot of 30, 40, 50 year olds are ending up in the ICU. Yeah. And it's unclear exactly why some people but, experience it as a minor but, cold but and they some said, people get yeah, it really that's, awful. That's the weird thing. And they said when it first started in Washington that, or a lot of the people that I was listening to, they were saying how they're worried because a big factor in the severe cases in China seemed to be people who were older, but smokers. And here they were worried about people who are overweight, have diabetes, have heart disease, high blood pressure, yeah. all these uh, weight related issues that they just don't have in China right? compared to the United but States. A lot of the people like there was a 28 year old fitness instructor with no prior health conditions that ended up in the ICU on a ventilator. Yeah, but that might've happened anyways. No, I know, yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying like that, on, that would you know? be the kind of guy who's like, Two weeks ago, I don't really have to worry about this. Yeah, that's well, true. So this yeah. is the whole like you know, if you're healthy and have a strong immune system. I think in other pandemics, it's or you know, influenza spreads. It's oh, you have a good immune system and you're healthy and strong, so statistically you're more likely to already have a resistance to this if it's in the community. Is what I would imagine. Whereas this is so new, like yeah, a really healthy Olympian. Like you said, their body might it might be their response to it that it makes their lungs get all fluidy, and it's the pneumonia that kills them, not really. Oh, this the, virus the is not what's killing people. From the virus. It's, it's like, the overreaction it's a weird, from the yeah. immune system. And, right. Yeah, and so just because someone's strong and healthy doesn't mean anything because we literally not 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 only as like a people we don't know about this virus, but like literally on a cellular level we don't know about it yet. Like your body doesn't know about it until it runs into yeah. it. And it's just going to have to run through a bunch of people. And then the scientists will be able to say, oh, and it does this and that. And now we yeah. know about it. But where are the damn lab rats on this? Well, that well they've like actually been testing monkeys and rats and various like animals. Well, they, they, they wanted to test, can you get reinfected by it? Okay. And you? according to the, the, the it just got published God, like not. a couple of days ago, they did this with monkeys. They infected, poor monkeys. They infected monkeys with coronavirus and then tried to see if they can get reinfected. And it looks like you do get immunity to it once you get it. Yeah, it's double jeopardy. Um, so they're actually looking monkeys. into... They're, I they're think, a necessity. I don't want to get into they it. They announced that today or yesterday that they're looking into um, making taking blood from people who had it and recovered. Oh, oh God. I thought you were going to say monkeys. And um, getting the, the plasma from that and then it, it will be filled with antibodies. And so if There's you only inject one pint of monkey <coughs> blood a day, if you, you know inject, what the doctor says, one pint of monkey blood a day keeps, keeps the, the corona away. Keeps, <laughs> well, it keeps it. Keeps the coronavirus something. <laughs> keeps the coronavirus all to I like to go in fresh. <laughs> um, so they're injecting. No, so the, the, the uh, one idea would be plasma? that uh, if you inject, like, oh, let's CPP. say, five milliliters of, of um, a previously infected person's blood that has the antibodies. Faster into a medical worker's blood, they will have about two weeks of immunity. What? And then it wears away. Wait, so if you got huh. coronavirus, I could steal your plasma and be immune for If you had time. the right equipment the to centrifuge, you had to use a centrifuge and get the right shit out of the blood and then like know how yeah. to like isolate the antibodies. So if you, if you just like kidnap me and like do that while I'm passed out drunk, good luck. Wouldn't it be way so easier to just go into the mask factory and be like, oh, you're running at 16 hours a day right now. Well, we're going to bring in people and you're going to just run the other eight hours. Like, just make more masks so we don't have to start doing blood swaps, micro blood swaps on people. Well, Johnny, gain, even with masks, there's immunity. no guarantee for the healthcare workers. And I think that's one of the most legit places to be concerned is well, they don't, you don't, don't want to see nurses and doctors start getting sick because well, we're yeah. already well, at they, capacity. They are. They are Sir, we are at capacity. Equipment. Yeah, I was just watching well, no, it's because they're reusing masks. In the yeah, they. They don't well, have I saw that there's a Stanford study came out recently, it's and researchers more. found if they if they 
edible? I think it's bake the masks in an <laughs> oven at like 150 degrees for 30 minutes. 158 degrees. 158 degrees. I, hear you sanitizes. Yeah, I saw that. Did you, did you also see... Put your shirt in there too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah did you guys also toasty. see that they're trying to um, look into ways, because Italy had to do this, of taking one ventilator and splitting it so that it, it works on two patients. I saw somebody yeah. in Italy, they made a 3D image or a 3D printed oh, yeah, attachment yeah. to like a scuba mask and was using that as a ventilator. Huh. Yeah. And what's this whole thing about making rooms negative pressure? Does that have to be a thing for the ventilators? Yeah. yeah. What does that mean exactly? Like how know. pressurized so are these rooms? A like positive Mars. pressure room. No, it's to help with the infection. A positive pressure room means when you open the door, the air is always going to be coming out. Yeah. Because of the way you have the airflow right. set up. Oh, like, let's say you're yeah. you're doing you're making cheese in there. Oh, so beer, air always goes in. Making cheese. So the air is always getting sucked <laughs> in and going <laughs> through a filtration system. That's such a weird example. System. You know, cheese what? corona. Who's oh, yeah. making if cheese in just, negative pressure rooms? You know, when you're just making cheese in your in your No, you're going to positive pressure room for Whatever. cheese. Whatever. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Honestly, it depends what kind of See, cheese. See, this is why I brought it up. I've smelled cheese that smells like a whale's vagina before. How do you know, do you know what a whale's vagina, vagina gonna, smells like? Gonna, I smell this cheese and you'll know. You'll just know. I was with a guy who said, um, actually, you know, Nathan. I was, si- I was sitting at a oh, bar he, with Nathan. He's a friend of the podcast. And he goes, excuse me, can I Famous have a guy. sample of the stankiest cheese you have? And the guy's like, you really want it? And and I oh, tasted I, I, it, I, I and there, I, I, I... That's such a cunty order to make at a cheese shop, really? Like, well, especially, you know? it's like being at... And guess what else this, this fellow Nathan did at a It's like a going in and saying, Mexican give me your strongest drink. It's like, no, get the best one. Don't and Nathan, if strongest. you're listening, yeah, you know you did this. <laughs> he said, can you yeah. get your hottest sauce? And the guy had to go to the back and brought out this bottle, and he put a couple drops on each chip for us to try. I was crying in the bathroom. Well, that's just because it you're sounds wet. horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. I was literally in the bathroom, just like I'm not having a good. I time. bet if I <laughs> gave you three drops of Tapatio on it, you would have said this is delicious. I don't know what that is, but Tapa- I trust you. Tapatio is really it's good. A gr- it's a great moderate hot sauce, and it boosts Mi- your immune system against health. Corona. Or Frank's, it sure does. does. This, this latest factoid brought sriracha. to you by Tapatio. Feel the tap. I do love Steve. Rever- you have to say reverse oh, sponsor. Shit. Yeah, Fuck, you see? can't say brought to you by because it's not. Reverse mm, brought to legal, you by. Le- just le- 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 legally. legally. <laughs> I'm having trouble Jeez. with word modification <laughs> when I try to find like the noun form or the adverb form. Oh, yeah, you have been struggling. How, you need, you need is, more sunshine. Quarantine know. life, man. I think I'm coronered up. Have coroner'd? you noticed the New York accent no, says I coroner? It. I hate it. Coroner. Coroner. Do you guys have coroner by you? What's funny is I didn't no, use we have not. Here it's COVID. Everyone's saying really? COVID now. That's coronavirus. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's real. <laughs> yeah, we have that. I did. I did used to work in Corona. Virus, Queens, no, Queens. It is a real place. Corona. No, all right, we'll laugh about this uh, next year. Well, so, some of us will. The rest will be dead. What are That's your um, food slash drink recommendations for uh, quarantine life? Ooh, good question. We've been doing um, a lot of uh, a lot of. You should do a lot of garlic, a lot of spice. Yeah. Clears out Cooked the garlic. Uh, sinuses. No. Clears no. out the senses. Raw garlic gives raw gar- me gas. Like you yeah, but it's believe. really good it's, for your immune way, system. It, raw, raw Johnny, garlic. Johnny, you don't have to eat raw garlic. No, but it's Johnny, really good for your immune when Johnny system. gets back, it's psychotic. But tell, just tell, chew on cloves. Tell even. him that I haven't done it. Yeah, tell him that you <laughs> look hate, it up. Tell him that you hate <laughs> cooked. Tell him that uh, raw garlic is so much better for you than cooked garlic, and he'll flip out. Because he's an idiot and he thinks he knows everything, but raw garlic is far better for you than cooked gar- cooked garlic is not good for you at all. Raw garlic is fantastic for you. It's, it's, I uh, don't. What's your evidence? It's scientifically, uh, it's. Uh, uh, do you want me to send you studies on it? Because I, I can. You can. Yeah, I would love that. Okay, I will. I, I would say you I have had... a, as, about as much evidence for that as I do for cold showers. Deal. Because <laughs> you're way more confident. Can we do a, can we do a raw garlic, garlic versus cold shower episode? <laughs> I would be down for that. I would do an episode on that. Um, for sure. What do you What do you guys think we should do for episode 100? Because I think it's we might coming. hit it during quarantine. Uh, We're really? on 89 right now. My? Are we really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I also want to posit. Do you think we should wrap this up and maybe do a drunk tank? Yeah. I would Sounds be about right. We're I have an idea for. 10, yeah. I have an idea for a drunk tank too. Well, tease it, man. Okay, so we've been talking about quarantines, and I feel as if a lot of what you guys had se- have said so far, and particularly when you mentioned the stacking of dishes, reminded me of some quarantine-like training that you guys both have that might be worth doing an episode on. And I am, of course, referring to the legend. The Burrow. 
of the borough. Oh shit! I think we should do a borough <laughs> cast. I'm I'm so down because you have you survived yeah. that. That yeah. was a survival experience. That was a quarantine. In I, I say you pose that question to Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> so oh wait, there he is. So Mr. Genie. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> we were saying that we should probably wrap this up right about now. And um, I was saying I think we should continue to do a drunk tank. And let's I, do it. I think a fantastic topic for a drunk tank would be a burrow cast because you guys survived that. And I feel like there's some valuable experiences there that have taught you a lot that you're using yeah. now. I'm down. Kara wants to jump on too, and she lived there with us for a while. Oh so. my god, perfect. Kara, Kara probably has more information than either you she or was more I do. Sober yeah, she that. was yeah. way more cogged. <laughs> That's yeah. true. If not because she was more sober, she was just in school or something. I don't know. Yeah, she was more. I was uh, in school, conscious. but I was a senior, so I was barely in school. Yeah, that's that's college for you. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, so, all right, so. folks, for 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 uh, those of you that don't know, Drunk Tanks are these extra episodes we do. We post them on Patreon only. Patreon.com slash Thunk Tank Podcast. Is that um, right? Please consider using some of that. your stimulus that you're going to get <laughs> from this and donating a dollar per episode. That's dollar $4 episode, a month. Folks. And uh, we will love you for it. And you get to see pictures of me and my frog suit. I guarantee you, you're going to want to pay a dollar to hear this Burrow episode. Yeah. Guarantee you. So we have about <laughs> nine Junk Tank episodes up there. And the cool thing is you get a link. It's 10 cents an episode. And if you copy and paste it's the pennies. link into your podcast player, you'll get a separate feed for just that shit. It's, it's, um, I actually listen to them sometimes, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. I know. Yeah, you're like, good thing we put that behind yeah, the paywall. Yeah, it's good that, that, <laughs> that only people that already like us will hear this. That's not available just to yeah, the normal the general public. general public, no. Yeah. <laughs> all right, any closing <laughs> thoughts on quarantine survival? Well, in all seriousness, uh, be safe, guys. Uh, hang in there. Don't be stupid. Stay safe. Stay smart. You know, find your beach. Find your beach. Find your beach. Find your beach, metaphorically and literally. In our well, case, we have a beach right here. Um, yeah, I think, uh, definitely use it, use it as a, as a time to use like, it or lose it. um, you know, get something, get, get out of this, a better person, not just like a, think of it a wasted an, time. Think of it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Yeah. It is. Yeah. If you have more free time, yeah. use that time wisely. And that includes having fun and watching Netflix. How many times and, and do you say during shit? your life, you say, oh, I don't have time to do that. I don't have free time. No, I, exactly. So, time. So a friend I mine, don't have time to learn a, German. A, it's like, now you a do. A friend of mine actually posted that, a writer friend, where she said, yeah, remember all those times where you said, oh, if only I had more time to write? Turns out you're just a liar. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. All right. uh, Johnny, right. any final thoughts quick? Well, you know. <laughs> no, I got nothing. All, all right. right. <laughs> uh, let's close this file. And, and uh, uh, hope, hope to you see don't you have to hang up, tank. Johnny. Just hit stop on the file, and we'll uh, keep drunk tanking. Don't so tell me, you don't tell me what to hit do. Hit us up in the drunk tank. In the, up. In the tank. Goodbye. In the tank. In we love you. Don't get infected. In the tank. We're in the tank. You're I've heard you can get tank. corona Come through Wi-Fi. Just heads up. Come in the tank. Join us in the what tank. What is it? Alt F4? Alt F4. Alt F4 this podcast. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the Funk Tank podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, If you want to help us out, please consider leaving a rating or a review wherever you listen to podcasts and uh, share it with people you think might like it. And if you really want to support us, you can go over to patreon.com slash thunktankpodcast. We have links to this in in the episode description and other places. And for as little as $1 an episode, you can help us keep the lights on. And you also get access to a very special drunk tank uh, feed of episodes. So... Every few episodes, we'll have a few more beers and record an extra 20 to 30 minutes of extra thunky, silly, uh, whateverness. So there's a separate RSS link you can get from there. And if you put that into a podcast player, you'll get your own separate feed of only the drunk tanks. I think we have about six or seven of them out already and more to come. Thanks for listening and stay funky. <laughs>